Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica, and today I thought it'd be fun to do not only my first Q&A video, but do it like in a get ready with me kind of style, because I haven't done like a full, like long kind of get ready with me in a bit. I got this idea because after I posted my big bookshelf tour of all the books back here, if you're interested, I'll have it up on the cards. People were asking a few more questions and people were actually commenting that they liked how I opened up a bit more and talked more about like my life and my job and like my hobbies outside of like makeup and YouTube. And I got a few questions from there and I thought I've never done a Q&A before. And part of me was like, Monica, you're not going to get enough questions for a q and I mean, but I did. You guys came through and I posted on my um, community tab here on YouTube. I also posted on Twitter and Instagram. And I got questions through all three and I actually don't know if we'll get to all of them. So I was actually really happy. So thank you to everyone who posted a question. So I thought we could just get ready with me. I'm working from home today. So we'll just do a get ready with me and I'll answer the questions as we go. All right, before we jump in, I also have a playlist of all my Get Ready With Me's. I mentioned it's been a while since I've done one, but I've got them all on a playlist. It'll be up in the cards if you want to see it. Before we jump into the first question, I'm going to go in with my primer. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter I've been testing out, and it is super glowy. I think this is going to be awesome, like when I no longer have to worry about having like the mattest of matte foundations on, because it does actually come through the foundation and it looks super glowy and i actually love the effect i just don't think this is the right time of year for it i should have got i want to use a primer brush because i've been putting this on with the same sponge that i use for my foundation i noticed that sometimes it'll mix a little bit too much so let me get i'm not prepared let me get a brush all right we're back in action i got an elf brush and i got a wet and wild brush i think i'm gonna go with the elf because it is a bit domed so we'll just blend that in and let me pull up the first question do, do i have screenshots out the wazoo Okay, so I'm going to combine a couple of questions here because I did get this, and I do get this even outside of YouTube quite often. Uh, someone asked, oh, I, also, I forgot to ask if anyone wanted their names mentioned, so I'm not going to mention names for who asked what question. Um, but someone said, where are you from? Someone else asked, what ethnicity are you? I always wondered. And then on Twitter, <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite ones. What tribe are you from? Because I swear you look like my native sister from another mista. <laughs> So in general, people are wondering like where I'm from and what ethnicity I am, which I get that a lot in everyday life too, because I don't look or I mean, I guess I, I, it's hard to pin me down. <laughs> I think back in the day when I used to actually tan, it was a bit easier to tell. But before I say, why don't you put your guesses down below? It's also hard because I don't really have an accent. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I am actually Puerto Rican and Polish. A Puerto Rican. My dad is Puerto Rican and my mom was half Puerto Rican and half Polish. So technically I am three quarters Puerto Rican and one quarter Polish. <laughs> I got like the hair and the eyebrows and everything like from my dad and my dad's side of the family clearly. But like I pulled a Harry Potter and apparently I've got my mother's eyes. So do with that what you will and the where you're from question that's a bit hard since i was a military brat as we get into that i'm gonna put on my Too faced peach perfect foundation and since i'm not leaving the house i'm not gonna mix this i don't want to put that much effort into th to this i'm not gonna mix it so it might look a little dark but i'm working from home so i'm just gonna apply it with the sigma f80 and then i'm gonna blend it out with my sponge from shop miss a so anyway, where am I from? So both of my parents were born and raised in Jersey City in New Jersey, here in the States. And my whole family is basically from Jersey. I did not actually get raised here though, because my dad, I think I mentioned this before, my dad joined the Air Force the year I was born. So we moved around constantly. Uh, I was actually born on an Air Force base down south. And the earliest they let a newborn on a 737 back then was two weeks. So I flew before I could crawl. A true Air Force baby, right? So yeah, we traveled. I've lived in Jersey. I've lived in Washington, D.C., New Mexico, Panama, like kind of all over the place. And we've driven back and forth. The only place I really haven't been is the West Coast. And I would love to go to the West Coast. So technically, I'm not really from, well, I say my family's from New Jersey because it's tough. I don't really have like a hometown because I didn't stay anywhere 
long enough to have a hometown. Wow, do you see how nice and glowy that looks? And this is a matte foundation, and all I did differently was put that primer on. I think it looks cute. For concealer, I'm gonna go in with the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, which has been like the only concealer I've been using lately. And to set that, I'm going to be using my Shop Miss A AOA Studio Perfect Loose Setting Powder. And then to set my face, I'm gonna use both the AOA Pressed Powder and I actually got this recently. I'm still testing it out. This is from JCAT. This is the Aqua Assurance Powder Foundation. I picked this up because of Taylor, known as the Taylor here on YouTube, mentioned it was one of the best, like, full coverage, but still, like, luminous powders to use, which intrigued me, so I picked it up. So yeah, since I moved around so much, and since I technically, I never really learned Spanish, <laughs> my Spanish is horrible. In school, I took seven years of Japanese, yeah. So I never really learned Spanish. I can hear a conversation and get like 80% of it, but I can't like respond in Spanish. Like just how it is. <laughs> so that's why like no one can really guess. I don't speak Spanish. A lot of people think I'm Asian because, you know, I speak Japanese. So actually I'm a bit rusty at that too, since I haven't been practicing and it's been a while. I was thinking of actually like picking up some books and doing some more practice in my free time, but that's neither here nor there right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let this sit for a second and we'll pick up the next question. Someone on Instagram asked, would you do a ranking your eyeshadow palette slash your makeup series? I could do ranking anything probably other than my eyeshadow palettes just because I literally have so many eyeshadow palettes. I don't know if I could rank all of them. I, I have around 100-ish. I don't think I could rank all 100 of them. <laughs> but I could probably rank like concealer or rank like primer maybe. But I don't know if I would do like eyeshadow palettes. I know that's kind of a popular thing right now, but I think my collection right now is pretty big that I wouldn't be able to really do that. A question I got from a couple of places was, uh, how did you get into makeup? So I was like the biggest tomboy, like as a child. Um, my mom passed away when I was very young. I was like seven. So for a while, it was just like me, my brother, and my dad. And I just grew up in like an all-guy military household for a bit and I was basically a tomboy from the age of like nine until like 15 when I went to boarding school. It was only when I went to boarding school that I actually like kind of wore makeup for the first time. I remember when I was like 14 my dad and my stepmom bought me like this big makeup set but they bought me this huge like makeup set and it was like a nice makeup set. It was like Elizabeth Arden and it was like a huge like train case full of makeup for like my 14th birthday. And at that point I had never mentioned being interested in makeup. They basically, it was like half gift, half insult. Cause they basically said, yeah, you should start wearing makeup. And I'm like, but I don't want to. So that basically that train case full of like nice makeup just got thrown in the back of my closet until I went to boarding school. And at that point, I think I gave away most of it because I, I wasn't into makeup. I would wear like eyeliner. I would watch my roommate put on foundation and it was uh, like foundation that came in like a jar you had to put out and she was using like a poof to like smooth it in and I was never into it. I think the most I liked was like eyeliner, like winged liner I loved. And then when I was in college, I actually started wearing makeup. I think it was my junior year. My, yeah, my junior year, I actually got interested. I think it was YouTube. So I started watching YouTube videos and I remember getting a very early subscription to Ipsy back when I was still in my dorm. And I had that, I'm gonna get powder everywhere. I had that for a while because I remember getting those packages when I was there and I remember just trying to learn how to do things like trying to ask my my best friend who we were in college together I asked her like how do you do your makeup how are you doing your liner how are you doing this how do you know how to do this so I was just asking questions I was trying to learn but I didn't really really like get into makeup to this extent until um, I was like out of school and I was working full-time at that point <laughs> I feel like <sighs> working full-time is so different from school right because like whenever you're in school there's always something you've got to prepare for or something you can do there's always homework right but when you get into the workforce it's just like you go to work and then you come home and you leave if you've got a decent job and you've got a good balance you leave work at work so i need i needed a hobby <laughs> essentially and makeup intrigued me i was watching tutorials at this point i was like wanting the products but i couldn't afford anything i was obsessed with drugstore makeup 
like starter kit videos because I was like I can't afford it let me find the cheapest things what is my full kit and I just started experimenting I was working at the bookstore at this time and I would try to contour for the first time. I remember going to Sephora and my first few experiences at Sephora were terrible. <laughs> I, I think I did a whole video on that. I'll link it up in the card. But I remember clearly watching tutorials on uh, color correcting because I had dark bags under my eyes and it was kind of a slow progression and then when I finally got to the point where I could pay my student loans and have a little bit left over, what I wanted to spend my money on was like makeup. <laughs> So I started collecting and thankfully I got to the point now where I've got like this nice collection and I started my YouTube channel. Speaking of, there was a question that came through on Twitter. What made you want to start YouTube? What's the worst and best parts of YouTube? I already answered the next part, which is how did you get into makeup? So this is actually a really good question. So I wanted to start YouTube because I was at it got to the point where I was constantly watching a bunch of channels and I was watching them do like tag videos and like project pans and I got to the point where I was like in the morning, like now if I was doing my makeup just like for work or something, I would like talk to myself and be like, so today I'm gonna use my favorite powder. It's this AOA studio powder. But I, was, I wasn't filming. <laughs> I was just talking to myself and I was like, I was intrigued and I was like, I wanna do that. Like I wanna be involved. I wanna, I wanna have a channel. And I was just so self-conscious. I was like, I, you're not going to do well. Like, no one's going to watch you. Like, why would you want to do a channel? Like, you don't know anything about filming. You don't know any, you don't know enough about makeup to do a channel. But eventually it got to the point where I was learning more and more about makeup, about makeup brands. I got encouragement from some of my best friends and I decided, you know what, let me just try. <laughs> At that time, I didn't have a camera. I was filming on my iPhone. And if you want to go back and look at those videos, it's there's a big difference. So go back and watch some of my earlier videos because it wasn't like immediate, like great quality content. Uh, my first video was actually on, it was on the, it was a new Mac at the time. It was the Mac next to nothing like foundation that I actually like hated it. I ended up returning, but I did like a full day wear test and I did like a review on it. And I think I tried also making a background because I hated like the back of my room. So I tried to have like curtains hanging behind me. It didn't work. <laughs> I tried a few videos. I wasn't happy with the quality and I stopped for a little bit. But then I was like, I like YouTube. I want to keep doing it. So I actually that Christmas bought the camera. And after New Year's, it was the beginning of 2018. That's when I started doing it regularly. And I was like, I want to commit to doing YouTube because, it, you know, it's fun. And I said I would give it like six months or a year and see how I still feel about it. And if it wasn't fun or if it was too much work, I would stop. I haven't stopped. This is really fun and I love it. And I'm so glad I finally just took the, took the, you know, jump and tried because that's the thing. Everyone says the hardest part is just starting. The hardest part is ignoring all those things in the back of your head that are like, no one's gonna watch you. This is gonna be blah, 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 blah. Ignoring all of that and just doing it and seeing how you like it. I'm not going to say it's not a lot of work because it is a lot of work, but if you're passionate about it, then it doesn't really feel like work, which sounds so corny. I'm sorry, but like, actually. So the next part of the question is what's the best and worst parts of YouTube? I think the best part of YouTube is making friends and like talking to people about my weird makeup hobby that I can't really talk about in public, not in public, but like to anyone else. Like if anyone in like on the streets like oh your eyeshadow like I get that sometimes like oh your eyeshadow is so pretty oh your makeup is so pretty and I'll be like oh thank you it's that new ABH palette that just came out or I'm like oh thank you it's this highlighter from this brand and it's in this color and they'll just go like uh -huh. and like they don't care they just thought it was pretty but like on YouTube I can say like such specific things like oh that new Natasha Denona palette looks so cute that's coming out and like you guys understand and you want to talk and you want to discuss like Yes. <laughs> Whereas anyone out here, if I say Natasha Denona's coming out with a new palette, what do you think about it? They're like, who's Natasha? <laughs> As for what's the worst part of YouTube? <sighs> Thankfully, I haven't gotten like hate comments that often. I get a couple of weird comments every now and then, but thankfully, like my comment section isn't that bad. I know a lot of people say that's the worst part of YouTube for them. Thankfully, I haven't, I've experienced some comments, some you know, bad people, not bad people, but people bringing toxicity in. And thankfully it's not, you know, widespread or anything. So that's really not that bad. I think the, the worst part, I would say, you know, picking a schedule and sticking to it. 
because as someone who overworks, Christina Chang actually just did a great video about this. This is like our hobby. This isn't like our job, right? But we still feel dedicated and committed to like five videos a week or three videos a week. I was doing five videos a week and it was a lot of work on top of a 40 hour a week job. And I couldn't sustain that. I just couldn't. I needed to adjust, but I felt bad. I felt like I was letting not only myself down, but like you guys down who were expecting five videos a week. But if I hadn't gone through that, I wouldn't have realized how to better organize my time, how to better organize my channel. It's much better to come out with three well thought out, well edited videos a week than to push out five videos where I'm killing myself trying to get everything done. And I had to realize that. So I think the hardest part is just figuring out the schedule that works best for you and sticking to it. But also not like not being as hard on yourself when you might not hit it. It's all about communication. Like if I'm going to post a video late or if I have to skip a day, which I try not to, but if I have to, the community tab is there. I try to be more active on Instagram and Twitter, but I still feel like I'm letting myself down and letting you guys down. So I'm working on that part. Um, but I think a big thing that helped me was moving from five videos a week to three videos a week because it was, it was stressful. It's tough. And I think there was actually a question about work-life balance. Let me see. Okay, so I finally found the question. I kind of have these ordered because some people asked about my boyfriend and I was going to save those for the end. So the whole question was, how did you and your boyfriend meet? Would love to hear more about your relationship and how you balance it with work and YouTube. So I'm going to save the boyfriend because someone else asked how we met. I'll save that kind of towards the end. But I thought it was a really good question about how I balance like relationship with YouTube and with work. So I'm going to kind of do that first. Okay, I feel like I've been stuck on this stage of my makeup for a bit. So I'm going to move on for my contour and my highlight. Or actually, just for my bronzer and my contour, I'm going to go in with this Profusion palette, the Highlight and Contour 1. So I'm going to use the Light Sculpt as my bronzer and I'm going to use the Tan Sculpt as my contour. And then for blush, I want to go in with this Pretty Vulgar blush. And then... I'm probably going to use the highlight from my pen, from my project pan. So we'll move that way when we get there. So balancing YouTube and work. Like I mentioned before, I had to figure out a schedule that worked because five videos a week with my full-time job, with my relationship, with my friends was not sustainable for me. Um, so finding that out was really good for me because what I do, like right now, I like to film and do a little bit of work in the morning before I actually get to work. So I film my videos. I like to shower in the morning. You see, I just washed my hair. Uh, I'll shower in the morning, film in the morning. 95% of my videos are filmed between 6 a.m. and 7.30 a.m., which is normally when I would leave to catch a train or I would start putting my stuff away to get my laptop and everything out to work from home. So I do wake up early and I do go to bed early because I am more productive in the morning and I do have, it's a bit more quiet. My family is not really around so I can film without there being like distractions <laughs> in the morning. And then I go and I work. I I work anywhere from like 8.30 or 9 to around 5. And then if I commute home, depending on the trains and whatnot, it takes a bit. But then I'll come home and during the week, I just stay at home, eat. And then I'll spend the night doing thumbnails, editing, reading a book maybe. But for the most part, I spend at least an hour or two, maybe more, responding to comments, doing some editing. So during the week is when I get like most of my work done. Or I try to anyway. Sundays become kind of like my de facto YouTube day. Saturday, I try to just spend time with my boyfriend and with my family and any events that we have. Um, but since my boyfriend, he his weekend is Friday and Saturday. He has to work every Sunday. So we try to spend time together Friday night and Saturday. And then Sunday, I stay home and do like all my chore things. Like I do my laundry. I clean my room. I get ready for the week. I uh, do a lot of editing on those days. So it was really all about just finding a routine like that that worked for me. And this one works really well right now. So I keep um, like a really detailed like calendar schedule in like a Google Doc that I follow. And I plan ahead of time what videos I want to do a couple weeks out. Um, whenever I film them, I highlight them a different color. Whenever I need to film next, I highlight that in a different color. When I edit the video, it gets highlighted in like green. And then when I upload it, it's I've got a very detailed color <laughs> coding system going on. And I just keep track of 
you know, what videos need to get put up, what videos aren't up yet, what videos I want to do next, because I'm a very organized type A person. <laughs> but yeah, for me right now, with the full-time job and with the three videos a week, I feel like I do have the flexibility and the time to still make time, like, for my friends and to make time for, uh, my boyfriend and my family. And that being said, my boyfriend's been involved, um, like, in a few videos, too. Like, sometimes we'll have fun, like, the hair dyeing video that we did together. Um, I'm trying to get him on to maybe do another B-Wow, because we did do a B-Wow together with Rex a while ago. So I'm trying to do another one of those. But he's like 100% supportive. Someone, I think someone asked what my boyfriend thinks of the channel. We're gonna wait for the airplane to pass. But he's 100% supportive. He actually helped me um, like learn some sound design. He was helping me test out like mics. He helped me pick out this mic that I bought. He He's just been there and he's just like really supportive and nice. <laughs> Okay, so let's get to the rest of these questions. I think the rest of these are all from my YouTube community tab. So the first one is, do you see yourself living anywhere else? If so, where and why? This is an awesome question. As someone who grew up like moving a lot, I never actually pictured myself settling down, which is kind of odd. I think I've been living now in Jersey post school. This is the longest I think I've ever lived in one place. For my highlight, I'm going to go with my Dior Nude Skin Luminizer. This is in shade one. But yeah, so I never pictured myself actually like settling anywhere. As much as I like Jersey because of like the area and because of like all my family being here and my friends, it's expensive. <laughs> it's expensive living this close to New York City. Actually, any anywhere in Jersey, it's just so expensive. Uh, which is probably, I mean, it's part of the reason why my boyfriend and I are having issues like finding an apartment we can afford because it's expensive. If I were to live anywhere else, I would, I don't know if I would live there, but I really want to go to the West Coast. Um, I've heard awesome things about like Seattle, about like Portland. I'd love to go visit there. If I were to move anywhere, it'd probably still be a city. I am not a country girl. I need, I don't drive, so I need like public transport and I need to be able to like walk to things. I loved DC. I would probably go back to DC. I love DC. Other than that, where else? I mean, I would probably stay around here. I mean, if I could, if, if money was no option, I would probably be living in like closer to my office. So probably in like North Jersey, if there was no, if there was no money issues if I didn't have student loans, <laughs> but anywhere else, I, I would love to go either, I don't know if I would do New Mexico. I remember loving Albuquerque when I lived there as a kid. I'd love to go back and visit, but I don't know if I would live there. I think the only other place I could actually see myself living is DC, since I used to live there and I loved it. Like you could walk everywhere. I lived right downtown, so you could like literally walk everywhere. I used to love jogging around the monuments and I loved it, so I'd probably go there. For my eyebrows, I'm going to go in with the shade from my Pen That Palette in Subculture. This is Mercury. I don't want to sneak peek the progress because I've actually made some great progress recently. So I'm going to use the shade Mercury in my brows as we go to the next question. Someone asked, this might be too personal, but what do you do for a living? Also favorite song slash artist. Okay. So what I do for a living... Uh, so what I do is very different from what I went to school for. I went to school for criminal justice. I got out and I started working because not too far from my house is a Barnes and Noble college. So I worked at a Barnes and Noble college. Uh, I worked with publishers. I worked with, you know, university staff. And from there, after a couple of years, I actually went to work for a publishing company. So I am technically an editorial associate slash editorial assistant. So I'm like a junior editor. Um, it's kind of hard to explain what I do day to day, but I basically help um, my company do a lot of data processing and editing and um, publishing for trade centered books. So like the product products that I work on, not like science textbooks or anything, but textbooks focused on trade. So like construction, like process technology, like it is actually pretty fascinating. Nothing I was ever really into or learned about, but I'm learning so much now and it's actually really cool. So we publish those books and I like the whole process. It's like really cool. I also do a lot of work. Our company is switching systems. So part of my job was being the one person to be like on, not on call, but to jump in and like attend these trainings and learn the new systems and figure out how to move our team over. So that's basically what I do kind of like day to day. And then favorite song slash artist. 
I'd probably have to say a band. My favorite band is, still is, Linkin Park. It's actually a big thing for my family, too. It's like the one thing that, like, me, my dad, and my grandma all have in common. We all love Linkin Park. <laughs> I know, it's a bit odd, but I love Linkin Park. Uh, it absolutely broke my heart when Chester Bennington passed. I found out about that when I was at work. Um, I was still working in the bookstore at this point, and I think I was on my lunch break, and it, the news broke, and I actually, like, almost started crying, like, at work, and... I don't know, he went through a lot, and I'm just devastated that he didn't, like, he deserves so much better, is what I'm trying to say, and I feel horrible for him and for everyone else in the band and in his family. Um, oh, this just got sad. <laughs> but I still love Linkin Park and their works. I think my, f I, I don't know if I can pick a favorite. <sighs> I'll, I'll link like a few of my favorite Linkin Park songs down below if you guys want to listen, but I can't pick a favorite off the top of my head. But that's definitely my favorite band is Linkin Park. Ooh, this eyebrow just got bushy. Ooh, what happened to this brow? <laughs> Ooh, I just messed up this brow, but we're gonna ignore that. All right, now that the trash truck has passed, we can continue. Someone asked, is there any products you decluttered then wished you hadn't? And are there any products you've changed your mind about? I think I could probably do a whole video on products I changed my mind about, so I, I'll save that one. But about the decluttered and wish I hadn't, there are a few. Normally when I declutter, I like move things out and do my best to just... Before I do this, I want to set my face. So I'm going to get some Fix Plus. And let's just spray my face. Nothing is like more satisfying than like the immediate difference when you use setting spray. Because while before I looked a bit powdery, once you meld everything together, mwah, it's just like art on your face. <laughs> All right, now the face is done. I'm gonna prime my eyes. I've been using this uh, Makeup Revolution cut crease canvas. I haven't been doing cut creases with them, but this has actually been a really good eyeshadow primer. And it, it was affordable and it's been lasting me like forever, so. Would recommend this. So yes, decluttering. Yeah, there are a few things where I do feel regret. Like, oh, maybe I could have made that work. Or maybe if I had tried that foundation with this primer. Or maybe if I had done this or that. So there are a few things I, like, kind of regret. But for the most part, like, my declutters are, like, done for a reason. And I don't want to, like, go back on them. So I've never... Oh, yeah, I can't say I've never done that. I think I have maybe once or twice. But I do my best to, like, when I declutter something, either, like, immediately give it away to friends or family or put it in a box where I can save to donate if I can. Or if it's, like, a lipstick or something that, like, touches, like, my eye or touches, like, my lips, I don't share that. I kind of just toss it. I try not to think too much about what I've decluttered. I try to do it during the actual process. I'll talk myself into keeping something or I'll talk myself out of it. But at the end of the day, like, I've got enough makeup for, like, 10 people. Like, I don't really need to feel regret about it if I've gone through the process. Because I really declutter things when I've tested them and they really don't work for me. So it's really just kind of like my overactive mind thinking, oh, you could have done more for that. But really, if I declutter something, it's it's done for a reason. Ooh, this is actually a really good question. If you had the chance to redo your entire makeup collection, what would you do differently? Oh, this is such a good question. I think, no, if knowing what I know now, if I were to like lose everything and like start my collection like from scratch, I probably would start with like mainly, well that's kind of how I started before, with mainly drugstore products, just like more affordable things. And I would probably stay away from like the higher end products that I've tested and like no don't work well. Which I never would have found out if I hadn't tested them myself. So I can't 100% say that I regret that because I did learn and I was able to share what I learned. But if I knew what I knew now and went back and redid my collection, I would probably buy more indie because indie products have totally blown my mind. I would stick to drugstore and indie more so than like what I would see at like Sephora because for the longest time I limited myself to like what I could only see at Sephora because that was the makeup place. But no, it's not. <laughs> it's not. But I think it's because that's like the first makeup store I was exposed to and the first one I really went to. I was limiting myself to what was there. 
and I really didn't have a lot of knowledge. So I was limiting myself to YouTube and to what I saw at Sephora. So knowing what I know now, I would definitely stick to more drugstore products and to indie products. Part of that same question or post was, if you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would you choose? God, this is so difficult. I, hmm, oh, only one food. I would want to say that I would approach this strategically <laughs> and like pick a food that you could technically like like vamp or change up a lot. I don't know why, but like the first thing that's coming to mind is either pizza or sushi. Those are like my favorite things. If I was, I don't know, I also really love steak. I could go the rest of my life eating steak, but only eating steak. Oh. Oh my god, would I choose pizza or would I choose sushi? Could I make a sushi pizza? Ew, that'd be gross. You know what? I think I would pick sushi. I honestly, I love sushi. There's so many different kinds of like fish. You can do cooked sushi like in a sushi roll. You could do like sashimi. You could do like the rice with it. There's almost like so much you could do with it and I love sushi and I don't get to eat it that often. My family doesn't really like sushi and uh, my boyfriend, like his, okay, so there his family does like a sushi night and like they actually like make it at home and like i went one time and i was like this is amazing like so like i <laughs> i told him i was like tell your mom whenever it's sushi night let me know i want a calendar invite i i will be there <laughs> whenever it's sushi night because god damn was that good oh, but yeah so i it would probably be sushi my favorite is tuna i love tuna and uh Salmon's a close second, but I like tuna. And then the last question from that post is, why are you so adorable? Why are you so cute? Stop it. That would... Thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see. The next question, or the next post, also had a bunch of questions in it. So the first one is, what do you do in your free time? The majority of my free time is YouTube, uh, put towards my YouTube channel. I also love to read, uh, obviously. <laughs> I've been reading, I'm trying to get through the Outlander series. Um, I'm on book five right now. And it's, honestly, I think it probably could have ended after like book four. I have no idea. There's like three more books. I have no idea where this is going. I know we're going to get to the point where they hit the American Revolution, but like, it's like when a TV show or a drama is good, but then they keep throwing like crazy, crazy, crazy more drama on top of it just to pad the runtime. I feel like I'm kind of getting there with the series, but I'm almost done with book five. Like I'm, I've got like 50 pages left or so. Um, so I read that on the train whenever I commute. So almost an hour, two hours a day. So I've been getting through it pretty quickly. What else do I do in my free time? I like to watch some TV, some anime. I've been trying to catch up on, we just finished Attack on Titan, the third season, which has been out for a while now. Speaking of, I really wanted to do <laughs> like a silly video about Attack on Titan, like maybe doing like a tutorial about their eyebrows or something. I'm having too much fun with that idea. So like I watched that. Uh, my boyfriend got me to watch um, the Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt on Netflix. So we're like on season two or season three. I think we're halfway through. So we're on season three. That's a very cute show. I didn't give it a chance. I never watched it until he was like, we, we got to watch it. And it's definitely our brand of humor. So I like that a lot. What else do I do in my free time? I sleep. <laughs> I like to sleep. <laughs> uh, oh, and I watch football. I'm a New York Giants fan, so the season just started. We didn't have a great first game, but the last time we won the Super Bowl, we started 0-2, so we'll keep the fingers crossed. And I don't think you're a true fan if you're only a fan when you win. You gotta be a fan throughout, which is really funny because a good friend of mine is like a Browns fan, which, you know, it takes a lot of it takes a lot to still be a Browns fan at this point. <laughs> the next question in that group of question is, do you have any pets? So I personally don't have any pets. I grew up with the cutest beagle. We got her, we rescued her when I was like seven or eight. And we had her all the way up until my senior year of um, high school when unfortunately she had some advanced stage cancer and we had to put her down. But her name was Sally. She was the cutest dog in the world. And I still have a soft spot in my heart for beagles. Like if I see a beagle on the street, I go, <gasps> bagel. Like I also call them bagels because they're cute. I call them beagle bagels. So I love bagels <laughs> and I love beagles, but um, I haven't uh, had a, a personal pet in a long time. Cause I don't know. I don't know if I ever really got over her loss. But also I've been living in like apartments and living with family where it's just 
difficult to have a pet. So I live vicariously as a corgi stepmom to my boyfriend's dog, Rex. And I've slipped up a few times and I've called him like my dog or our dog because that's what it feels like. But it's actually, <laughs> it's actually Alvin's dog. So he's a cute chunky baby. That's what I call him. I call him the chunky baby. I might go a little heavier on the eye makeup since I'm working from home. But I'm just going to go on default and do my favorite fall look. I'm not going to specify too much about what I'm doing because I actually filmed a full tutorial on this and it's going to be up in my next Pan That Palette update. So the last question from that kind of group of questions was, uh, since you like mini series or since you like mysteries and crime, do you have any book recommendations on that subject for entertainment? That's so many book. Okay. So one of the best like for entertainment. Okay. So I'm trying to think not too educational a really good book is called uh the bodies we've buried or the bodies they've buried and it's about people who work at the uh the body farm if you never heard of the body farm <laughs> let me tell you oh, welcome the body farm is this big scientific project i think it's the university of tennessee um, but essentially they've got this huge plot of land and they take bodies that have been donated to science and they just let them decompose in different ways in order to study how a body decomposes like in a car, how a body decomposes out in the woods, how a body, de like in different situations and they, they like, uh, like, what am I trying to say? They document everything and so this information can be used when you actually do find a body out there, you can help kind of identify like how long it's been there, how long is at the time of death, and it's fascinating. And they talk about the classes that people go and take at the body farm, and I, I found that fascinating. So I will have that book listed down below because I think that's really good. And I think it's, it's also not written in a textbook way, but there are pictures. If you're not comfortable with pictures of dead bodies and crime scenes, don't read it. But it's written in a way that keeps you engaged. It doesn't feel like a dry textbook is what I'm trying to say. So that was a really good book. I'm trying to think. I don't read too much other true crime. I think a good, one of the best series. Uh, so my uncle, who is or is a retired detective, used to be a detective, said that some of the most um, realistic TV shows he ever saw were The First 48 and Forensic Files. Those are the most realistic shows about actual, like, murder investigations and about actual, like, homicide detectives, right? So if you're interested, I'm pretty sure there's a few YouTube channels now that have the full Forensic Files series on, which I've been really loving. I used to watch Forensic Files back in, like, middle school, and I love that show. So if you're interested, I'd recommend Forensic Files or The First 48. If you're into fiction books more so than, like, true crime real books check out my book tour because I do have a few back there I think some of my favorites are probably like the Hannibal Lecter series um and I got a few other random gems back there so check out that book tour okay so now we're gonna get into what a couple people have asked uh, how did you and your boyfriend meet <laughs> well like any other 21st century couple we met on tinder yeah we met on Tinder. We um, didn't meet up right away because back when we first met, um, Alvin had a crazy work schedule. Uh, he was working like almost 12 hour days, like six days a week. So we really just like texted and talked on the phone and like Skyped and like FaceTimed for almost like a year until we decided like... Well, we went on a date before that. Our first date, we went for Chipotle and we saw a movie. We saw The Circle, you know, of Tom Hanks and Emma Watson, which was so disappointing. I liked the book a lot and the movie was just trash. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I like ruined our first date because I wanted to go see that. It was a while before we went on our first date, but I felt like it was actually really good because we got to know each other like really well and I felt like if we didn't have that really good foundation of being like good friends before we started dating it wouldn't have worked out as well so after we had been friends and basically knew each other for a year we decided that we wanted to be exclusive and actually like start dating and that was almost two years ago it also uh, the first week of October is our anniversary which is the vacation that we're gonna take so that's our two-year anniversary which if we lied to our families about how we met. So if you talk to any of our family, you know, 
we didn't meet on Tinder. <laughs> I told my grandma that I met him at like a co-worker's party and I'm pretty sure like he told his family he met me online but that he knew me for much longer before we met <laughs> like in person. But thankfully that like how did you meet like really only comes up when like you first get together. So it's been so long now and he's met the whole family. He's invited to like every family function. I've been to like several family functions of his so it doesn't really stay around that long. <laughs> And the last question, as we are almost done here, is actually from my boyfriend. He commented on the community tab and he said, date, marry, kill. Coffee, books, makeup. Which, why would you do that? <sighs> Those are my favorites. Okay, let's think about this logically. I can't kill any of these. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, you know what? I would date makeup. I would marry books because books have been a huge part of my life, my entire life, and they still are, including my career. And I would have to kill the coffee. I would have to figure out a way to live without coffee, which if you know me, coffee. I've got two coffee cups on my desk right now, which, whoa, I've got two coffee cups on my desk right now. I would have to get my caffeine elsewhere. So those are all the questions and this is almost the full look. I'm just going to throw mascara on and a lipstick and that's it. I've got to start getting ready for work. <laughs> so I'm going to just stop this right here. Thank you guys so much to everyone who submitted questions and for everyone who was so nice. I love this. I would like to be more open like this. So if there's any other questions you guys have, let me know down below. And if there's enough, maybe in a few months, I'll do another Q&A video. Make sure to watch out for my next Pan That Palette update if you're interested in the progress I've made and in this kind of basic quick eye look that I've been loving. I've literally done this look like every day for the past like two weeks because I love it. And it reminds me of fall. Thank you guys so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in my next video. Bye.